You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. I'm very good. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa ordered early payment of July salaries for government and public sector employees. According to the order, salary payments must be made on Wednesday the 23rd of July in order to enable citizens to meet the needs and requirements of the upcoming Eid al-Fitr. Based on this order, the Ministry of Finance and the Civil Services Bureau and the General Organization for Social Insurance will take all necessary measures to ensure that civil and military state employees are paid on the date specified earlier. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Glebia Palace today the Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh, MPs and senior state officials. His Royal Highness urged the, to carry on economic policies that stimulate investment in the kingdom, particularly in the financial and banking sectors, in order to achieve more economic progress and boost various economic sectors. His Royal Highness also stressed the project to be studied extensively ahead of their licensing, especially regarding their financing potentials, to ensure their success and avert any negative impacts on the kingdom's developed investment situation. His Royal Highness warned against exploitation of the kingdom's openness and open-door policies to serve agendas aimed at undermining national security and landmark achievements. He also stressed that the Bahraini citizens are highly aware and can distinguish between those who seek national interests and those who work against them, no matter how many misleading slogans are included in their rhetorics. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister called for the need not to stop at the current level of cooperation among GCC states and step up efforts to achieve the Gulf Union, noting that the challenges facing those countries and the troubled regions surrounding that make the union imperative. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired at Libya Palace the weekly cabinet meeting at the opening session. His Royal Highness expressed thanks to the Saudi leadership for their warm hospitality during his last visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with the accompanying delegation. During the Bahraini Saudi meetings, a number of regional and Arab issues were discussed. The Saudi stances were highly, highly praised, generally in cooperation with the Arab matters and especially in the support that Saudi Arabia gives to the Gulf states and Bahrain. His Royal Highness gave his directives to the concerned ministers to expedite the delivery of all required reports to be reviewed by the specialized committees in order to ensure proper workflow of their ministries and the government programs. The cabinet welcomed the important visit of the Palestinian president to the kingdom, hailing the conference of the Palestinian ambassadors in Arab countries taking place in the kingdom of Bahrain, wishing them all success. The cabinet discussed a number of subjects and memoranda listed on the agenda. It approved a memorandum of the implementation of the Perling Trail project, which aims to restore and rehabilitate 15 out of the 17 historic buildings inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa telephoned Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak and conveyed to him the condolences of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Malaysia's King, the government and the people on the victims of the passenger plane which crashed in eastern Ukraine. His Royal Highness also conveyed condolences and sympathy to the victims of the tragic incident. For his part, the Prime Minister of Malaysia expressed his deep thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his sympathy and noble feelings towards the victims of the tragic incident. He also thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his noble feelings and sympathy for Bahrain's king, government and people with Malaysia, which reflects the deep-rooted relations between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa paid a visit this evening to the Majlis of Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa where they exchanged cordial talks. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince said the holy month of Ramadan is a school of faith leading towards upholding the values of the true Islamic religion of peace, tolerance and unity. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of the values of moderation and building their contribution in the life of the nation and the need to promote these values in the face of extremism and dangerous consequences on the homeland and the safety of the innocent. His Royal Highness wished Bahrain and its people continued development. His Royal Highness also noted the stances of Bahrain's king, government and people towards the Palestinian people in support against the brutal Israeli aggression and destruction. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa expressed deep thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the visit, which underlines the importance of communication with all Bahraini families. He wished Bahrain further security and stability. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Conference for Palestinian Ambassadors for Arab States was opened today by the Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. Here is Danielle De Porto with a full report. Palestine's ambassadors to Arab states congregated in Bahrain for a conference today to discuss the latest developments in Palestine and the ongoing Israeli offensive. The meeting came ahead of talks in Doha between Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who are attempting to negotiate a ceasefire agreement. First of all, allow me to extend our sincere thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Bahrain and to the King of Bahrain and to the Bahrain people who uh, have warmly welcomed us in, uh, in Manama here. We are very honored and pleased to be here uh, on our role. We are looking forward to an important conference uh, to the Palestinian ambassadors in the Arab world 
uh, uh, the main issue of this is how to face challenges in the future and uh, how to uh, support our Palestinian people in particular at this time they are facing the Israeli aggressions in Gaza and people are being killed every day uh, the part uh, our part and our role is to show the whole Arab world and the whole world actually uh, what our people are facing and on the diplomatic uh, side we are hoping to achieve better and uh, improved bilateral relations with all Arab nations uh, even though we enjoy an excellent relations with all Arab countries all our Arab brothers uh, but we like to improve these relations and uh, build on it. The Conference of Palestinian Ambassadors was organized under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and was opened by Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. Present were Bahrain's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Palestine's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Riyad Najib Al Malki, the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Salah, as well as a number of government ministers, international diplomats, and UN officials. Bahrain's hosting of this conference affirms its supportive stance towards the cause of the Palestinian people and their legitimate right of establishing an independent state with its capital in Jerusalem. I'd like to welcome uh, President Mahmoud Abbas and his accompanying delegation to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, such conferences are very important where everybody meets uh, together and uh, discuss very important issues. Um, what I know and uh, what I believe that many know too is the fact that we all work together to achieve world peace. And uh, we work together to achieve peace where everyone's voice is heard, where everyone's life is respected. And uh, we look together for a brighter future and uh, we pray for peace to come about very soon. Reporting from the meeting of Palestinian ambassadors to Arab countries at the Gulf Hotel. For Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The President of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, left Bahrain today noon following a visit to the kingdom during which he held talks with His Majesty the King on the latest Palestinian developments. President Abbas was seen off at the airport by Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, ministers, the Governor of Muharraq, Palestinian Ambassador to Bahrain and staff members of the Palestinian Embassy. Earlier, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas paid a visit to the Royal Charity Organization, the RCO headquarters, where he was met by the chairman of the Board of Trustees, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa. President Abbas commended the efforts of His Majesty the King in supporting the Palestinian cause on all political, humanitarian and developmental levels. He recalled Bahrain's honorable stances and continuous support to the people of Palestine. His Highness Sheikh Nasser, meanwhile, stressed that Bahrain's leadership, government and people firmly support the just cause of Palestine and pledged to continue to support its people. The President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Head of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the presence of the First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a number of Bahraini youths representing the Executive Office of Youth Societies and Student Councils and the winners of awards patronized by His Highness Sheikh Nasser. His Highness affirmed that youths are a main pillar in the improvement of the society, calling on them to be part of the development process of the kingdom. He said youths have the right to have a role in setting national national priorities so they seize the opportunity to take part in building a brighter future for Bahrain. The meeting discussed a number of suggestions and issues regarding the development process of the kingdom. The Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments said that it filed a lawsuit to suspend the activities of Al Wafaq National Islamic Society for three months until it rectifies its illegal status following the annulment of four general assemblies for lack of a quorum and the non-commitment to the public and transparency requirements for holding them. The Ministry of Justice said in a statement that it filed the lawsuit following the insistence of Al Wafaq on breaking the law in its own statute as well as its failure to amend violations related to its illegal general assemblies and the consequent invalidity of all its decisions. The Ministry added that it had 
addressed the society directly and more than once on the violations and requested their ratifications. However, the society continued its violations with regards for holding its general assemblies. The ministry said that the blinding policy used by the society regarding its general assemblies, and particularly the last one considered the general assembly ahead of political activities, is a deviation from the objectives of legitimate political work based on openness and transparency. The society has also adopted a peculiar endorsement concept by giving a committee headed by a religious figure the right to accept or reject candidates for the post of Secretary General and Deputy Secretary General. The move is contrary to the foundations of democratic practices and imposes limits on the will of the General Assembly. The ministry stressed that such irregularities were a substantial violation of the procedures to form the components of the society and choose their leaders as well as to engage in activities and organize relations amongst members on a democratic basis. The ministry added that transparency in political activity under the law was one of the cornerstones of democratic development and a major component of the pioneering reform project. The ministry said that it noted that Al-Wafaq society was the only one that was non-committed to the rules of the General Assembly according to the law and statute and that it has held four General Assemblies that were considered null and void. The ministry added that the judiciary is looking into the case of breaches by the Nationalist Democratic Rally in the light of divisions within the society. In the statement, the ministry said that the irregularities by Al-Wafaq included holding two general assemblies without following the quorum rules and calling for two others in a total lack of transparency.